Hey guys, Bernardo Productions here, and welcome to another Visual Basic .NET tutorial. Now, as always, um, most of my Visual Basic .NET tutorials come from stuff that my audience actually wants to see. Now, here is another heavily recommend or heavily requested tutorial, and that is how to download stuff to your program and then track the download with a progress bar. Well, this can be um, done relatively easily using a web client, and right now I'm going to teach you how to do that. So let's go ahead and dive right in and go ahead and begin starting our application. So we're actually going to be making a Windows Forms application and I'm just going to make it a web client uh, tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and press enter and wait for our project to actually initialize itself. Now I already have a, a file copied or a files link on the web copied onto my clipboard so we're going to be able to use that and download that straight to um, our computer. So here we have a form, and we are going to design this form very nicely. So there is pretty much only one design that we can end up doing with this um, with this application, and that is pretty much just a progress progress bar and a button to start the download. So I'm going to go ahead and do this, and just drag a progress bar onto the form, and then go ahead and drag a button onto the form. And then we're just going to resize the form to fit only these components. Now in good style, I'm going to go ahead and start renaming. I'm going to rename the progress bar to progress underscore download. And then I'm going to rename the button to btn underscore download start. And then I'm going to change the text of the button to download exclamation point. So this is going to be relatively simple. Um, all we need to do really is make code for when the button is actually clicked. So if we double click on the button, uh, we get the code that is ex executed as soon as the button's clicked, and we can go ahead and begin writing our application. Now, the first thing we need to do is we actually need to create a web client that's able to communicate with the web and download um, files and communicate with us. So we can go ahead and do that by saying dim, I'm just going to call it wc as new web client. Actually, it's not just web client, but it's system.net.webclient. Now, in order to actually eliminate us having to type system.net all of the time, we can simply go to the top of our code, right above our class, and import system.net. And now we can go ahead and get rid of the system.net.web client, and then we're all set. So now we have a new web client. Now, all we really need to do to download the file is say wc.download file. And then we have the choice of downloading the file or downloading the file async. Now, if you say just download file, what this does is it downloads the file on the current thread. So I'm sure if you've been programming in VB.NET for a little bit, you've seen the classic thread blocked problem, where while you're trying to execute stuff, your program just stops responding while that current task is going. So if you use just the download file command, that will stop the thread and that will cause your program to stop responding. However, if you use the download file asynchronous or async command, um, you will actually notice that the program does not stop responding because what it does is it actually executes this on another thread so it allows the thread that you're running on to remain active so your program doesn't stop responding so in the interest of actually having our progress bar progress we're going to go ahead and download this file asynchronously and now of course we've got two things to actually specify for our file the address of where the file is located on the web and then the file name now, as you'll notice, um, both of these options contain the address as a system.uri. So what we need to do is we actually need to create a new URI right here. So we can just put this directly into the parentheses, and we s can just say new system.uri, whoops, URI, and then the parameters are the URI string, which is just the URL, which I have on my clipboard. So now that we have the address of the file on the web, now all we need to do is put the same file onto our um, file system, onto our local uh, program, or local hard drive, rather. So since this file is called setup.exe, we're going to go ahead and continue that name through, and we're just going to put it in my.application.info.directory path, and we're going to put it as setup.exe. Uh, so what this does is it simply downloads the file to wherever our program is located, and then it downloads it being called setup.exe. So now when we press the button, um, the, the file is going to go ahead and download itself to the file system. Now the only problem with this is we have the file downloading, however we don't have it actually relaying with the progress bar. 
So in order to do that, we actually need to create methods that um, handle th certain things about the web client. So we can go ahead and say add handler. And what add handler does is it simply takes these events up here that we can choose from for our for all the controls that are on our form. But add handler actually allows us to choose events from controls that we create while programming. So it essentially just allows us to use the controls that we put into the program at runtime just like we put them on the form while we're creating it. So we're just going to go ahead and add the handler of the um, event wc dot download file or download progress changed. So this, as you would think, is every time the progress has changed on the download, uh, we can go ahead, oops, <laughs> we can go ahead and do stuff with that. And then the object is going to be, um, well, in any add handler statement, the object is a method that you're actually going to be using. So we're just going to go ahead and say public sub download progress changed. And in order to coordinate this with our wc.downloadProgressChange, we just need to say address of download progress changed. Now, one specific thing about this is you'll notice that if we hover over the download progress changed event, we have th or two parameters here. We've got sender as object, and then we've got e as system.net.downloadProgressChanged event args. So what we need to do is we need to actually make our download progress changed event or method contain those parameters. So we can do that by simply typing in sender as object and e, e as um, download progress changed event args. So now that we actually make our web client communicate with, um, with our methods, we can go ahead and make our web client actually communicate with our progress bar. So all we need to do is every time this method is called, by the web client, our progress will be changed. So now we can just say progress bar, oh no, it's not called progress bar one, it's called progress underscore download dot value equals e dot. And this is simply getting all of the properties of the event. So as you can see, we have all the information about the download. We've got the bytes received, the progress percentage, the total bytes to receive, and the user state. What we're looking for is the progress percentage. So we just want to put our progress percentage inside of the progress bar. And now when we're actually downloading, uh, we can go ahead and check it out that it will actually communicate properly. So now if we go ahead and run the program, and then we actually start the download, if we press the download button, um, Well, this is awkward since it's not responding. Oh. Uh, so as you can see here, the program is actually not responding. And this is actually interesting because I believe the download is actually taking place, but it's just actually locking the thread. So I believe that the download was just complete. Oh, never mind. It just took that long to actually start the download, apparently. And so now the download is actually going, and we can see that the progress bar is indicating our progress of the download. And the download is complete because the progress bar is full. Now, how do we actually know if the download is complete? Well, we can do this by actually accessing another event within the web client. So we can go ahead and see, say, add handler wc dot, and then you can see that there's another event called download file completed. Well, we can go ahead and simply make something happen when the file is done downloading. So we're going to go ahead and make another method, public sub download file completed. And we're just going to use the default parameters of sender as object, e, e as event args. And then we can go ahead and do something when the file is actually done downloading. So we're just going to display a message box. The file has completed downloading. So now we can go ahead and actually link this method to our event by adding in the parameter of our object as delegate by saying address of download file completed. So now if we actually test out our application and we attempt to download the file, uh, which this is really interesting. I'm not really sure why the program is actually locking up.
But anyway, um, the program is done with its lockup and it's actually progressing. And we'll be able to tell when it's complete uh, by its indication with a message box. And here we can see that the file has completed downloading. So now what we can do is we can actually put some more information into our program. So for example, we can actually go ahead and make the program bigger and then put a label on top of the progress bar. And this label, which we're going to know going to name LBL underscore details, is actually going to contain information about the download. So now if we double click on our download uh, button, and we can actually go straight to the code, and inside of the pro or the download progress change method, we can actually change the label's information. So we're going to say LBL underscore details dot text. And we're just going to make this a simple, like, when you run updaters, it usually tells you how mo how more how much more files, how many more files you have to download, or how big the files are that you still have to download. So we can go ahead and make a simple fraction indicating how much more we need to actually download. So we can go ahead and do this by saying e dot total or bytes received, and then we can go ahead and use the ampersand and make a fraction, a forward slash, and then we're going to use another ampersand to tag strings together, and then we're just going to say e dot total bytes to receive. And then we're going to go ahead and run the application once again. And as you can see, the label is not actually in indicative of anything right now. But if we press the download button and we wait for it to go through its little program freeze, you can go ahead and see that we have an accurate indication of how many bytes we've actually downloaded and how many bytes we have to download. Which is actually kind of crazy watching how fast that number goes up. And the file is completed downloading um, successfully. We can tell three ways. One, the message box appeared. Two, the progress bar is full. And three, the bytes on top, that fraction is equal to one. So now you know how to actually um, download files and indicate their progress using a web client. The only thing I'm really worried about is the actual program lockup, which I don't really know why that's happening. However, it seems that if we don't start the program and we, simple, and we simply leave it um, open and then continuously press the download button, that does not seem to happen, which it is kind of interesting just to watch files download. So this can be useful if you want to make, for example, a download manager, or if you want to make an updater for your application. You can go ahead and implement this to actually contain progress bar, a progress bar indicating how, uh, how much of the update has actually downloaded. Now, keep in mind that this strategy is not always welcome because uh, it may show how slow the download is going, but that information is always necessary <laughs> to somebody like me. I really don't know where I was going with that. Anyway. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. Um, the code will actually be posted in the description as a link to BP Forums. Remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Um, if you'd like, you can follow me on Twitter, at Burndonian21. I'm recently becoming active there. And if you have any questions, please either uh, direct them to BP Forums or in the comments, and I'll be sure to answer. Thanks again for watching, and have a fantastic day. Peace.